Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. This is a new series on NestJS Angular MongoDB thread example. Okay, and this is our first video. So let's understand communication between Angular and NestJS and MongoDB for a user request. Okay, whenever user request first request will goes to angular server application okay wherever angular is hosted so their request will be received okay so once angular application receives request all the js file gets downloaded onto the browser okay now everything the pages everything will be painted on the browser based on the JavaScript. Okay. If user clicks any navigation menu or a link on the website, it won't go for server again. Okay. The content gets replaced dynamically with the help of Angular router logic. Means means for every request page won't be reloaded. Okay. So it is a single page technique. Okay, Angular application is a single page technique. But to display some dynamic content, content should be come from server. For that, we are going to use backend API. So in our case, we are going to use the NestJS application. So NestJS is a framework that builds on top of Node.js. Okay, NestJS is nothing but Node only. Okay. Now here NestJS will be our API. So the ja Angular applications will contain HTTP request. Okay. So those request gets invoked from our browser and that request goes to our API endpoint. Okay. Once then NestJS or the API receives the request based on its request, uh, controller and action methods which are nothing but a class and functions inside of our API gets executed. And this API will invoke the MongoDB or any kind of database for fetching the data because API itself cannot store the data. Okay, the physical storage of data will be exist in the database. So here our API depends upon the database. So once the data is received application returns that data as a response to the our client application nothing but angular application as a json format okay now once angular application receives that data it's dynamically bind and display the data on our ui okay this is how flow exists with angular and nestjs and mongodb communication for a simple user request okay so let's try to create NestJS application and walk through the existing files inside of it. Okay. For installing NestJS or creating the NestJS project, our local machine should contain the Node.js server. Okay. Node.js server helps to pull the required packages that are needed by our NestJS application. Okay. So go to Node.js download page and based on your operating system, you can download your Node.js version. Okay. Once that is done, the next thing is we have to install the NestJS CLI in our local machine. Okay. So NestJS CLI by, by installing NestJS CLI in our local machine helps us to give a command line access for creating the NestJS application into our local machine. Okay. So first you have to run this NPM I for install iPhone G for global level and at the rate NestJS slash CLI. So this command we have to install in our local machine. Okay. After installing the CLI into our local machine, the next thing we have to do is we have to create our project. So this is the CLI command for creating project. Next space new space name of your project. Okay. 
so copy this command and create a folder in your system okay so in that folder we have to we are going to maintain both our nest.js application and angular application for our demo purpose okay so after creating project open that command line terminal okay so paste the command and give an appropriate name for your project okay Next nine and fourteen API. Okay, this is my application name. Let's install. Let's create the project. And we can observe here our NestJS application successfully created. Okay, so now we have to open our applic NestJS application in an IDE. Okay, one of the best IDE is Visual Studio Code Editor. So go to Visual Studio Code. Okay, go to Visual Studio Code Download and click on this Visual Studio Code dot Visual Studio dot com. Okay, from here you can download the editor, which is a free and very useful editor. Okay, now let let's open our project inside of our Visual Studio Code Editor. For that, first we need to go to the root folder of our project. That is CD space nest nine fourteen and API, and we are on the root pro folder of our project. Now, from here we can open the Visual Studio Code Editor. So command is like code space dot. Okay, this is our Nest.js application, and let's explore the files inside of this application. Okay, default files. So first to go to package.json. So package.json contains uh, commands like how to run the application, how to build the application, and also dependencies. Dependencies are nothing but the libraries that are required to run the Nest.js application. And here you can see our Nest.js version that is nine. Okay, and like that, all the required dependencies for to run the applications, uh, their configurations will be added here. And dev dependencies. So these are also libraries, but are required for at the time of development. Okay. So like that, package dot configurations will have all the commands and the library references. Next, you can see the ts config dot json file. This contains how to build the TypeScript or how to run and how to out output the result once the, the Application is built. All the configurations will be available here. Next, go to src and here main dos ts file. So this is the entry file for our Nest.js application. And you can see here it is using Nest Factory for to create the application start. It's using the app module. So app module is our root module of our entire Nest.js application. And here. We can see one more configuration to run our Nest.js application at the port number 3000. Okay, so main.ts is our entry file, and app module is our entry module. Okay, and here is the controller. So we have we know that API contains controller and the action method. So these action methods get get executed for each request. Okay. And here app dot control is totally optional. If you want to use it or you can ignore it. Same way app dot service also totally optional because we are going to create our own individual modules and add those modules as a reference into our startup app module. So app module is mandatory because main dot ts loading app module, but app controller and app services are optional to use. Okay. So those are the required files we have to know about in uh, our Nest.js application. Okay, next let's try to add a debugger into our applications. Okay, so debugging an application is very important, right? For that, let's try to add the debugger. How to debug our Nest.js application? Okay, so for that, first thing is click on this run and debugger menu item. And here you can see to customize and run debug, create a launch 
dot json file so click on this create a launch dot json file so here our uh, application is node.js right select on node.js environment okay so once you select it and launch dot json file gets created with a default configuration okay but we cannot use these configurations okay so to add new configuration click on this add configuration button and it will ask us type of uh, like framework uh, launch settings we want to create okay so i am going to search for node okay i want to attach attach means we want to attach a process for the debugging okay so click on it so these are the configurations required for my debug mode so i can remove these unnecessary configurations from this array okay and my debug configurations look like this first thing is go to package.json uh, we have to run our application in debug mode okay in the package.json file we can found some commands for running the application okay simple npm run start means it will just start the application without any debugger but we want to add the debugger right so i want to run this command for that open terminal okay command is like npm run start colon debug okay run the command so here you can see our application is successfully runs and here you can see the existing uh, our routes in our application and you can see some console log here debugger is listening okay now go to my app controller to add a small testing debugging okay so i want to add a debugger at this line for that you have to click here you can see a red red color dot click on it so if red color dot highlights here it is a breakpoint okay so now go to again this run and debug and click on this attach button for starting debugging okay now you can see debugger is attached okay now if i access the endpoint i must hit the debugger at this line so for that localhost i know the port number that is 3000 for my nestjs application and you can see the debugger is activated so from this we can debug like this so if you want to go over the step you can click it if you want to go internally if there are any methods you can you can click it if you want to come out out of the some method from the debugger you can click up arrow okay if you want to go for next next debugger point you can click continue okay like that you can do okay so like that you can do if you want to disconnect debugger you can click on the disconnect okay that is how we can enable the debugger into our nestjs application okay next we are going to create the angular 14 sample application